Today we're going to take a look at Fusion 360, and I named it Let's Make Something Easy. Uh, I didn't want to intimidate anyone with uh, a big show of all kinds of modeling techniques and whatnot. I wanted to start out, I prefer, and this is the way I like to learn, I like to start out uh, something simple, something that I can grasp. Uh, but at the same time, I wanted to show uh, features of what Fusion 360 can do. So with that in mind, uh, we're going to build a couple easy parts, uh, but with that I wanted to make sure that I showed enough of the function within the within the software. So with that I made something that, you know, we can do some simple extrusions, some whole functions, rib functions, uh, fillets, uh, joints, and then even throw in, which I think is a really cool feature in Fusion, is some McMaster car parts. Now, with that being said, I really have to apologize to everyone. Uh, I did my timing uh, yesterday, and <laughs> it just ran too long. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to do the presentation, the animation file, and the drawing views. But what I will do is I will create a, a separate YouTube video and get that posted on our website, uh, whether that's a little bit later this week or certainly early next week. And um, you'll be able to find it there. So in that way, you can you know, run it back and forth, pause it, and really get a good idea of uh, how we're working with presentation files, animations, and some of the drawing, uh, drawing commands. Uh, now, I had a whole slew of, um, of PowerPoint slides, and personally, <clears throat> I always just hate PowerPoint slides, so we're just going to jump right into what we came here for today. All right, so in Fusion, um, you're looking at the part we're going to try to build today. And, and this part, again, it's not overly complicated, uh, but it's got a lot of the features we're looking for. We have the different types of holes. We have a rib feature. There's a rib feature under here and a couple of McMaster car parts. And I created the joints, and I also even um, have some limits set. So I'm going to show you maybe how to uh, add a simple limit. All right. So a quick overview. Um, the modeling space itself is, is uh, set out. You can see the browser is set inside a design window and, um, and our tools are up above. There's a couple tabs. Uh, to the left is our uh, data panel and this is where all of my content resides. All right. So uh, now this content is not local to my computer. <clears throat> the content is up on the Autodesk server. Now, I know a lot of people worry about that functionality. Uh, I personally have had no problems. And then if, and I know sometimes uh, in my locale where I live, we get some pretty violent thunderstorms and my internet will, you know, run out once in a while. Um, now, it's not a big problem because I can continue to work without the internet. However, if I have something I need to work on, I can just, if I know I have something here, I can just right click on it and just say, add to my offline cache. So that makes it available locally uh, for a period of time without any internet access. All right, and I can do that with any any project that I want. And uh, that works real nice. So with that being said, I don't want to spend too much time and this, uh, I can always open this up to questions at the end, but I really want to get into the modeling because this is going to take us uh, a good part of, uh, of this a lot of time. So as you see, here's the part, and as I talked about, this we won't be getting to this, but this is what I'm going to include in my uh, my video is how to do an exploded view um, and then how to create uh, the drawing itself, add dimensions, uh, text, uh, different views, things like that. All right, And even uh, we'll talk about how to create a parts list and get the information in there that I want. So. Uh, let's get started, and what we're going to do is we're just going to build uh, these components right here. So I'm going to start a new file, and uh, right now I just see I have a blank opening uh, part here. And uh, to begin with, uh, it starts out as a single. Now Fusion uses a couple different names. They use components and bodies and things like that, but it's to me it's just a part and an assembly. So right now I have a single part open, but I know 
uh, as I mentioned, I've got I've got two main parts that I want to build here. So I'm going to create those, and we're going to call them components. So I'm going to right click, all right, and I'm just going to say new component, and I'm going to do a slow double left click on this, and I'm going to name this one hinge bracket, all right, and then I'm going to do another one. And let me activate this. And I'm going to say new component. I'll do a slow left click. And I'm going to name this one uh, door mount. All right. Now, um, this is my, you're going to see that the icons have changed. You're going to see right here I have a um, kind of like a single component. And up here now, this one has changed from a single to uh, basically an assembly. All right, and just to be safe here, I'm going to save this, and uh, I'll just, I don't know, uh, block bracket, and uh, I'm going to say save. All right, so you're going to see right away over in my, uh, over my drawing panel that it's, uh, it created that part, and uh, is adding it to it. So I'm just going to close the browser for right now, my data panel. We don't really need that open. All right, so I'm going to start um, start sketching. Just like everything else, I need to begin to sketch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight. I'm going to go to my bullseye. Uh, this is named a couple different things. I'm going to activate this particular part. So what that means is I'm going to start building this piece. All right, and there are numerous ways to get into this, and that is I can start a sketch up here on the browser panel. All right, I, can, I have a shortcut started here. I can go to the uh, pull down on the create panel, and you'll see that I can create a sketch there also. So everything you do inside of Fusion, there's multiple ways to get it done, to get there. So there's no right way, wrong way, <clears throat> just like a lot of us do. And whether it's 2D or 3D, I work with different packages. We all find an, a comfortable way to work. Some people like hotkeys. Some people like shortcuts. Uh, a lot of people like going just to uh, the browser panel. And that's fine. Um, I kind of like, uh, if I hit my S key, uh, and you're going to see it brings up, I call it, it's a toolbox. And in that toolbox, I have placed uh, content that, I like to use over and over again. And uh, it's simple to find, so if I just go here and just say uh, sketch, and I just don't even, just, let's just start with an S. You'll see that everything with uh, S comes up, so it kind of starts doing a, um, a sort, and you'll see if I add another letter, it's going to add another suggestion. So now this one knows it's already up there, so I can either remove it from my shortcuts and if I have an up arrow, it's going to add that to my toolbox. So this is one way I really like to work. But So I'm just going to go to my shortcut, and I'm just going to start a sketch. Now, uh, I've got to choose a plane. You can Like any 3D modeling package, it must be started on a plane or a face. You have to put a sketch on one of those two items. So I'm going to begin my sketch right here uh, on this plane. And you'll see that uh, everything changes now. Uh, the panels up top have changed. I am now in sketch mode. You can see that by the sketches highlighted, and uh, the panels have changed. So again, if I want to start a line, I can come up here to my sketch create panel and go to my shortcut. I can go to the pull down, start a line, or I can uh, hit my S key for my shortcuts, and I sort of have that one available. Uh, Personally, I'm going to do, I'm going to start, um, like any, um, I have to decide where I want to start. And I'm, I'm going to say that this is where I want to start. I want to create this part that's centered on my origin. So if I turn my origin on, you're going to see that that's where I did my center of my part. All right. So I'm going to do that here. So uh, I need a center circle. So I can just either click here. And I'm going to hover over the origin. I'm going to left click and drag out. 
and I'm going to make this 1.25 in diameter. Right. So I'm done. I have enough to get this started and I'm going to finish my sketch. Uh, I can either go to extrude up here on my shortcuts, go to the pull down, extrude, but I am going to continue to use my uh, toolbox and everything here we can find up in the browser panel but just uh, this is the way I like to work and I speed things along so I'm going to extrude it and you're going to see that it's going to come up with an arrow in a direction I'm going to pull that arrow out towards me all right and if I turn my origins on you're going to see that here's my origin sketch plane so when I pull it out towards me, it goes in a negative direction, and that's fine with me. I'm just going to go negative 1.75. And it's going to be a new body, and that's fine. You're going to see that in my extrude window, I can certainly use this at the profile. I can change directions. I can go a distance, and it's going to be a new body. So what I want to do now is I'm going to sketch the bracket. And I'm going to start the bracket on this back side. So I'm just going to rotate it around. And I'm going to start a new sketch. And I'm going to place it on that. I can place it either on the plane or this face. And I am going to uh, go to my project. So I can either get it here on my toolbox. It is also under my create panel down here under project. And project now that's why I kind of like my toolbox I didn't have to go click drag down wait for it to project out uh, I like the toolbox it's available right away so it's asking what geometry I want to project this outer circle and I'm just going to say okay and now I'm going to draw the geometry uh, the way I want it so I'm going to hover over and you're going to see that my cursor turns to a little blue X and it kind of snaps on. So I'm just going to come down a little bit and I don't have to be exact here. That's what my dimensions and constraints are for. So I'm just going to bring it up and then there. And you're going to see that it kind of shades in because it's a closed, uh, closed object that I can actually extrude but I need to do some further work here. So uh, to begin with, uh, I'm just going to also do another project, and I'm going to project this plane, and you'll see why in a second. I'm going to say OK. And what I want to do is I want to make these lines here symmetrical about that plane. So I'm going to come up here and say symmetry on my constraint panel, and I'm going to constrain these lines so they are symmetric. So I choose both lines to be symmetric about that plane. All right, and that works really nice because now if I kind of even drag one of these, you're going to see that it's going to stay symmetric. And uh, that's going to be important for me right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to start adding a couple dimensions. So let's start with uh, look at that hot line. I had that line highlighted, and when I started Dimension Command, it tries to dimension it. I forgot to hit the Escape button. So let me go to dimension, and I'm going to choose the first line, the second line, and I'm going to make this uh, 0.3125. So now that is symmetrical about this origin and plane. Let's make uh, this leg is going to be 0.375, and I'm going to take it from here down to the bottom of that part and it's going to be uh, 1.75. Now, all the lines have turned black. Uh, no, they haven't. I forgot one dimension. Here's one that's blue, and my mistake. I want to go from the origin to the overall length, and this is going to be 3.125. Now, everything is black, which is telling me everything is now fully constrained. Before I added that dimension, that line was blue. It was a little bit of a hint that I need to add a constraining dimension. So I'm done with this now. Uh, everything is um, constrained. I'm going to finish the sketch. I'm going to hit my extrude. 
and I'm going to select now the reason it didn't select because it I actually have a closed circle here but I want this section of the geometry you're gonna see that it's give me a direction uh, it's not you know, so I chose the profile uh, it's only going to be one side so uh, it doesn't give you one side or the other side so your options are one side two side or symmetric all right, I, it's going to be this side, but I need it to go in this direction, and that forces a negative distance, and that, and that works fine. It's one side or the other. So with this, I want to put a negative 1.625, and it's going to be a join operation. I have a couple in here. I have a join, cut, intersect, new body, new component, but for this, I want this to be one component, all right, and I'm going to leave that a join operation. And I'm going to say OK. So um, right now, this um, this is starting to look pretty good. Uh, what I want to do now is I'm going to add another sketch over here. So I'm going to add a sketch. I'm going to place it on this face. I'm going to project some geometry here so I can add some lines. I want to project this circle and this point. And why I did that is I'm going to add a line from this point someplace up on this circle. All right. And I'm going to purposely leave it at an odd angle. So I'm going to just click here. It doesn't really matter where. Now you'll see now um, it's now an enclosed portion of the model and it, it kind of uh, turns a little bit different color, but I need to add a little bit, I need to add a constraint. And what I want is I want this line to be tangent with, uh, with this circle. So I can come up here to my constraints and I can add, select a tangent constraint. I'm going to choose this line to be tangent with this circle. And you'll see right away that it goes tangent. I get my tangent uh, indicator here icon. Uh, the line has now gone black because it's fully constrained, and uh, it looks good for me, so I'm going to finish the sketch. And what I want to do is I want to use this sketch as a rib. So uh, you may not, uh, there's a lot of different ways to find the ribs, so the rib is going to be under the create pull down, and you'll see that it's uh, right down here under the create panel. And it's asking me to do a couple of things. You'll see right away the you know curve. It wants the it's blue. So it wants you to select the curve, and I selected that curve, and now uh, nothing's really happened. So I'm sitting there. Well, you know where the heck is it? Well, what it's asking for is is some type of uh, dimension. So I'm just going to say uh, 0.3125, but yeah, that's not really the way I want to go, is it? So um, I don't want a symmetric, I just want one direction. And it's not the direction I want, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a negative. That's, that's the way I want it to go. And it knows when it goes in the right direction that it's got to go, uh, it, it's, you know, it knows which direction. It's kind of a little intuitive that way. You know, I can go flip direction here, but, you know, that's not, that's not what I, what I'm looking for. So this is a rib. Now, when you, anytime you create a rib, you may have to go through a couple selections here to make sure you get um, what you're looking for. So uh, the negative to change the direction. Sometimes you have to flip the direction to get it to go the way you want. But that's what I'm looking for. So I'm going to say uh, OK to this. And uh, it's starting to look pretty good now. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I want to add a hole in this boss up here. And um, so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to, I'm going to create a sketch. All right. And I'm going to put a sketch on this face. And, um, and right when I do that, you know, I can say project and I can, you know, I can project that circle. And that's fine. What it's going to do is going to project that that center point. And um, so I'm going to now say finish, and I'm going to start the whole command. Now the whole command is also on the create panel. Uh, it's typically a shortcut by default, or I can just come down and select the whole command. 
So there's a couple of different ways to do this. I can come in and I can select the point or I can just uh, click and add a hole. Now it's obviously offset. It's not, uh, it's not where I want it to be. But if I grab this center and I come around and you're going to see that, bang, it snaps right in there. And that's what I'm looking for. I want it to be centered. I kind of do that sometimes just to make sure that it is uh, correctly in the center. So uh, let's go to the the whole, win the whole window here. And um, I've already selected my face and the references. Now I need to come down here and select an extent. So I'm going to go to pull down. And I want it to go through all. So I want to go through all of this part. I am going to choose a simple hole. And the hole tap type you're going to see that I can go simple, clearance, tapped, or uh, tapered, tapped. But I want a clearance hole. I'm going to put a, I'm going to put a bolt in here, a three-quarter inch bolt. Well, I can't leave a three-quarter inch hole there. That's just not going to work. So I'm going to select a um, clearance hole. And for this right now, because I'm drilling all the way through, it doesn't really matter if I have a flat bottom drill or, or an angled tip. So I can leave this on either one. Uh, the default is angle. So I've got a couple other things going here. And you're going to see already that, well, it's got a .094, but it's it's given me options for, well, what do you want the clearance hole for? So I'm going to go, and I want to, I want an ANSI unified thread. I'm going to go to this pull down, and I want, well, I know I want a, a hex head bolt. And it's going to be three-quarter. And you're going to see the hole comes in the way it's supposed to. And look what happens up here for the clearance dimension. It's 0.781, and that works just great because what it's adding is adding that 30 second of a clearance to the three quarter inch bolt, and that's right out of the standards. So that works perfect. So I'm going to say OK, and you'll see right away that um, that's at least that's what I'm looking for. Now you can see here that I forgot. You know, I still have my origin on. I can turn that off anytime I want uh, just by clicking this little eye up here. Uh, what it does, it, it dims out and it puts a little line through it. It may be hard to see. Uh, so that's just the visibility of my origin planes. I really don't need them right now. All right. So um, and the other thing is I see that uh, oops, I still have um, one of my sketches visible, so I'm just going to turn that off. All right, so what I want to do now is I want to place two holes right here. And these are going to be spot-faced or countersunk, if you will. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a sketch to this, um, this surface. All right. And I'm going to add a couple points. Now I can go to my sketch and I have a point uh, icon here. So I'm going to place one here and I don't, you can see there's an inline function here, but I kind of like to leave them offset and I'll explain that in just a second. So I'm going to place two, two points because I have two holes. All right, so what I wanted, I wanted, I need to dimension these holes. Uh, points, I mean. So let's um, let's go to the dimension command, and I am going to start from my origin, and let's get that dialed in right there to this point, and this is going to be 1.1875, and then I'm going to dimension from here to here. And this is going to be 1.3125. And now I need to get these in line. So let me do a horizontal vertical constraint. So I'm going to constrain this one and this one. Now they are in line. All right, they're constrained in line. But I still need something to control that vertical offset. So I'm going to add a dimension from my origin point to here, and that is going to be 1.0. So now the points went black. Everything's black. It's fully constrained. I can 
uh, stop this sketch. All right, so uh, again, I am going to add a hole. All right, so I'll go to my hole command, and I can either select my two points. All right, and now I need to say, well, what am I going to do with them? So I'm just going to start from the top down. I'm going to say I want it to go through all. I want not a simple hole this time. I want a counter bore. All right, the other one is counter sink, but I want a counter bore hole. And I'm going to make this a, um, a clearance hole. All right, because I don't. Uh, I also want to put. Uh, I think this is for three eighth hole, and I, uh, I, I don't want to. Um, I don't want a three eighth hole for a three eighth. Um, bolt. So let's go down through here. Now it's asking me for what my countersink is going to be, the opening, and for this I'm just going to say, well, let's make it, uh, let's start here. Uh, let's go down. It's going to be an ANSI bolt. It's going to be a hex head bolt, and it's going to be uh, 3 eighths. All right. So um, now it's going to say, well, you know, how how deep do you want it? So um, I'm just going to say, hmm, let's see if I can get this counter sunk clearance. Oh, I'm going to say a simple hole. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to say a simple hole. That way I can set the parameters for this. This is why I wanted to go this route. So I'm just going to say, you know, this is going to be a 0.75. Uh, this is going to be a, um, and this is why I did a simple hole and not a clearance hole, because I want to be able to set all the parameters. And this is going to be just basically a spot face. If I would have selected the clearance, I automatically wanted to put that counter bore in for a three bolt head, and that's not what I'm looking for. So I'm going to say, you know, I only want this to be like a skim cut, so I'll take it down to 0 0.03125. I'm just, I'll just take a 30-second cut, all right? And uh, I'm going to say, you know what, I'm going to make this a uh, 0 0.40625. So that's a 30-second over the 3 eighths. And I'm going to say, now, if I don't know what, a 32nd over 3 eighths. If I have a 3 eighths, I know it's going to be a 13 32nd. I can also just type in 13 32nd. It'll do the math for you. So if I don't know, uh, I know a 32nd over 3 eighths is 13 sixteenths, but I may not know what that decimal is. So I can just type in the fraction 13 32nd, and it'll do the math for me. So it's a nice little, uh, little bonus there. So I'm going to say OK. And uh, and there I got it. So uh, this part's just about done. The only thing I want to do is I want to put a couple um, fillets. So right here is my fillet command. And I'm going to say, you know, I'm going to say here and here. And I'm going to make that 0.125. All right. And uh, before I go anywhere, I'm going to go to this little plus sign. I say, yeah, that works, but I want to add two more. All right. And I'm going to say, I want to go here and here, and that's going to be 0 0.125. And I'm going to say OK. So now I have my fillets on the top over here and these two edges. Fillets are pretty easy to apply. I could certainly have done a chain and gone all through here, but uh, I don't want to have any interference with the nut or wrench or anything else, so I'll just leave this part as is. All right, so I'm done with this part. All right, I better, you know, I can hit save right now to make sure that everything's, there is an auto save in here. I think I have it set for 10 minutes. That works great. Um, so I'm done with my uh, hinge bracket. So what I want to do now is I want to work on my door mount. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down on my browser and I'm going to activate my door mount. So I'm just going to click this component and you'll see what it does. It uh, puts the other part in phantom. 
Now I can turn that part visibility off, but I don't necessarily want to do that because initially I want to use some geometry from this one. All right. So the first thing I want to do, and I have this started, so everything I do now is going to pertain to my next component, the door mount. All right. So I'm going to start a sketch and I'm going to place it on this face, on the face of this boss. And then what I want to do is I am going to project both of these circles, this one and this one. And you'll see they go blue. Now the other thing I want to, I'm going to say okay. And the other thing I want to do is I want to sketch my uh, the actual hinge for this. So uh, I'm going to start a line command and uh, I'm going to place it, I want it to be um, I want it to be tangent but for right now I'm going to pull it off a little bit so I know that it's going to react the right way. So I'm just going to click, you see that I went um, from a normal cursor to, cursor to that blue X. I'm going to bring it out I'm just going to bring it out a distance. I do want it horizontal, and that's what that little icon is right there, the blue one. It's that horizontal icon. So I want that horizontal, and you'll see that I'm coming down a little bit, 90 degrees. That works fine for me. I'm going to bring it over, and for right now, I want it to be tangent right here, but I'm just going to leave it off and click and then come down at an angle. And you'll see that my icon has gone from a black cross to a blue X. And the blue X means I am snapped onto that projected geometry. So I am just going to uh, click here somewhere. All right. And that works for me just right now. So the first thing I want to do is start cleaning this up. I'm going to add a couple uh, constraints. So I'm going to add a tangent constraint from here to here. And I'm going to add another one from here to here. All right. That works pretty good. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. So now let's add a couple dimensions. And I'm going to go from uh, the center out, my overall. And this is going to be 3.8125. Uh, the thickness here is going to be 0.375. Now, you can see I still got a little bit of a blue line here. It's because you can tell that's a little bit skewed. So I forgot to, well, I didn't forget, but I just didn't notice it, is I need to put a perpendicular constraint from here to here. Now that looks a lot, now I've got my tangent where it should be across from my radius, and this is now black. Everything is now black, and that's the geometry that I'm looking for. So uh, I can uh, finish now because I'm fully constrained. I got the geometry sketched out the way I want. I am going to extrude, and uh, I'm going to select. Now you're going to see that I'm going to select both profiles. I want this one and this one. All right. You're going to see the arrows coming out towards me. That's fine. It's going to be uh, a distance, and I'm going to select as a distance as two and a half inches. All right, it's going to be a new body, and that's fine, and that looks just the way I want it. So you'll notice I, you know, I didn't have to draw the center circle because it's pulling that geometry from the one that I already dimensioned originally. And I'm going to say that looks pretty good. So I'm kind of done with, um, with my bracket. I can turn that off if I want because I'm just working with my door mount. And uh, what I want to do is, uh, so if I go back here, the next thing I need to do is I got to get this uh, raised surface on there. So that means I'm going to place a sketch right here. So let's place a sketch right here. And I'm going to start by just drawing some, some lines. So I'm going to start, I'm going to start just try to get a somewhat representative shape. So I'm just going to click right there, I'm going to pull it. Now I'm going to stop. All right, I stopped the line. I'm going to press the left mouse button and hold it. And when I hold it and I start pulling out, you're going to see that it's automatically going to start drawing a radius. 
all right and that's what I'm looking for as soon as I let go it stops and it continues the line command so I'm gonna do that two more times I'm gonna come down here I'm gonna cl left click I'm gonna hold the button and pull out a little bit and go up and then I'm gonna let go and I'm gonna come up and now I'm up here I'm gonna do the exact same thing hold the left mouse button I'm gonna go up and a little bit to the left and I'm gonna go over till I join all right now that doesn't look all that beautiful but that's okay we can fix this up so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go up to my tangent constraint and I want to add the tangents that I know will finish this off so there's one right there there's one there there's one there I need one here and there's one there so I have tangents on all my points all right and that's why I'm looking now there's another thing I want to do is I need to draw a line because I need to center this somehow so let me draw a line and if I go to this N you're gonna see that my cursor changes again from a black cross to a blue X I'm gonna come down a little bit and right there it snaps and I come up with a triangle which is telling me I've hit a midpoint and I that's exactly what I'm looking for so I'm gonna click there and I'm just gonna bring this down and I can either I can stop anywhere it doesn't uh, I can go right here if I want or I can extend it but I'm just I'll stop here so I finished the line I'm gonna select that line and I'm gonna hit my X key when I hit the X key what it does it converts it to a construction line I could have simply come up here and hit this line also in my sketch palette I could have come up and just click that and it also would have converted that to a, a construction line and uh, so I got, like I said, there's multiple ways to do everything. All right, so what I want to do now is um, let me add a constraint. I want to, uh, I want to coincident constraint with this point and my construction line. Oh, that's better. And let me start adding a couple dimensions here. And I'm going to add, this is going to be a 0.5 radius. And I'm going to add one here. And I'm going to left click, but instead of saying enter, I'm going to come down and choose my first dimension. Now what it does, it now equals that D28 dimension. And I'll hit enter, and it's going to be a 0.5. So if I should change this dimension, this one's going to match it. I'm going to do the same thing down here. I'm going to click, left click. I'm going to choose my original dimension and choose so now if I should ever change this one 0.375 they'll all change let's leave it to 0.5 all right now I need a couple more dimensions I need um, I need these to be in line I want to make sure they are vertically constrained I'm going to say okay all right and they are now so if I move one you're going to see they both move now I need to add some dimensions. I need to position this. So I'm going to come up and I'm going to choose my origin and I'll choose this first line. Oh, come on. I'll choose that line. I keep missing the dimension. So that point and this point and I'm going to say uh, actually that's not what I really wanted I had to do uh, let me delete that let me say this point and this point let's do that first and this is going to be 1.3125 and this point and this point is going to be two inches now I also need to dimension this space Right, and that is going to be 1.5 all right now why now there's two things I can do here I can go back to my symmetric command and make these points symmetrical about this line all right and we I showed you how to do that and that's probably the way I would normally go but let's do one other thing I am going to place up this point and to mention that line and you see I come up to the dimension I'm going to choose this overall 
and say divide by two. So that's another way to make things symmetrical about uh, about a line or a point or something. So it's another just another way to do something. All right. All right. Everything's black. Everything's ready to go. I'm going to say finish sketch. I'm going to uh, extrude this. So let me choose extrude, and I'm going to make that distance uh, one eighth inch. And it is going to be a join operation. I'm going to say OK. And that looks pretty good to me. So one of the things I want to do now is I want to get rid of these little wings here. And I don't have to actually even draw anything. What I'm going to do is go back to my last sketch and uh, make sure that that one is on. I'm going to turn it back on. It's a little bit hard to see, but that sketch here is now visible. And I can use it. So what I'm going to do, without doing anything further, I'm going to hit the extrude command, and I'm going to select this geometry and this geometry, but I don't want a new body. I want to do a cut operation. All right, the distance is going to be all, and let's just change the direction there, and I'll say all. All right, so all I did was utilize the last sketch and choose these two regions and a cut operation, I'm going to say OK. So now I have that tapered out just the way I want it. So I can turn that sketch back off. I'm done with it. Actually, uh, let's leave it on for a second. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to add a sketch up top here. And I'm going to, um, oops, sorry. I'm going to add a sketch up here. And I am going to project these three points. All right. So all that's done is it's brought that up to the top so I can now, I can turn my original sketch off. Now I can use these to create uh, holes. All right. So I'll finish the sketch. And I am going to go to my hole command. Hole command is very versatile. I mean, uh, once you get a good feel of how to use it, it does work. It works great. So I'm just going to choose the three holes, the three points. And you're going to see that it kind of keeps all of my previous uh, settings. Um, so we're going to uh, change a lot of things here. So I'm going to say I want to go through all. I want this to be a simple hole. I don't need the countersink anymore. This is going to be a clearance hole. So now it's giving me my information for what type of clearance hole. And I'm going to again say I want a uh, ANSI unified thread. I'm going to say a hex head bolt. And this is going to be a 3 8 bolt. All right. And you'll see right away that it adds the 30 second clearance on that 3 8 It's got down to a 0.397. And I'm going to say OK. All right, so I'm going to try to maybe speed it up a little bit here. We're kind of running at a, running a little short on time, so um, I'm just going to add a quick fillet. Um, so I'm just going to add a fillet right here, and this is going to be a 0.125 fillet. And I, maybe I should add another quick one right here. That is also going to be a 0.125. All right. All right, so this part is done. Uh, well, actually, it's not. I want to do one last thing, and this is another rib command. So I want to—I need to add a rib right down here. But you can see there's no face and no plane to sketch on. So uh, you'll see if I turn in the origin, my origin's all the way out there. So I need to add a plane in here. So I'm going to go up to my construct um, pull down, and I, there's a mid plane function here. So I'm just going to select that, and I'm going to select this face and this face, and you're going to see that it adds a mid-plane right down the middle. As I mentioned before, you can only place a sketch on a face or a plane. So sometimes you have to create a plane where you need it. So let's add a sketch. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to do a little bit of projection. I'm going to project 
this flat edge and this circle. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to add a line someplace over here and I'm going to put it you can see it's latched on already but I'm just going to make sure that I'm off of the tangent because I'm going to create one so I'll click right there so I know that I need a tangent constraint so I'm going to click this tangent that place and tangent that's good and now I need to add a dimension so I'm going to add a dimension from my origin up to this point and I'm going to make that 2.5. Everything's black. It's constrained. I'm going to say finish. I'm going to add a rib to this. I'm going to choose that line. Now you're going to see that you now it's not where I want it to go. I'm going to change the direction. All right. It's to next. I'm going to say I want this to be uh, 375, I guess. So I'm going to say negative 0.375. And that looks just about the way I want it. I'm going to say OK. So an easy way to apply a rib in some place you, you might struggle with. All right. All right. So um, that's uh, I'm finished with this part. All right. So let's go back to my main assembly, turn on my bracket, and I'm pretty much done with this. Now, there's only a couple other things I need to do. I need to add a bolt and a hex nut. <clears throat> so I wanted to show this because this is one of the coolest functions of Fusion, I think. It doesn't have a content center. It kind of relies on McMaster Car for a lot of its content. So I'm just going to say insert a McMaster Car part. I'm going to go to bolts. All right. And I can go a couple different ways. I can come up here and click on the icons. I know I want a hex head bolt. Uh, I can go a heavy hex head. I can continue to do this, and you'll see over here that it's got you know it's it's got other stuff here for me. And I can say yeah, I want an inch, and you know what? I want a three quarter by ten because I know I want a three quarter um, unified course. So instead of going through all, browsing down through all these selections, now I can come down over here and I said well I know I need a five inch. All right. And I'm going to come through here and say, well, what do I got left? Now, I only got a couple selections left, and this one happens to be the one I want. All right, partially threaded. So I'm going to click on um, the part number. I'm going to say part detail. All right, it gives me a lot of information about the bolt. tells me the type. gives you all the information, the tensile strength. It gives you a drawing which you can download also. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to choose uh, a step file. And all I'm going to do is say save. So in a couple seconds, it is going to place that part right here in my file. So uh, I'm just going to click this. I'm going to drag it out here a little bit and do a little bit of pre-position. And I'm going to say that looks good. I've got a really nice McMaster car part. So uh, the last thing I want to do is I want to add one more part. And this time I'm going to add a nut and a uh, hex nut. And let's go to, uh, I can go hex nut, I can go inch. I can scroll down here and say I need a three quarter by 10. I'm going to make it steel and I'll just make this a, uh, let's see what we got over here. It's already got uh, a lot of selections for us. And how about if I go with a, there, I go with grade eight. So product detail gives me all the information. I can download all this, print it out, tells me the dimensions of the nut. I'm just going to step file. I'm going to say save. And I'll place this preposition a little bit. And I'm going to say OK. 
So I got my uh, parts. They are now uh, parts in my in my assembly. So I'm ready to go here. Um, now the only thing I need to do is start adding joints. And the one thing, even though we built it, you're going to see that nothing is constrained. It's um, everything's kind of the way you built it. So I have to start constraining a couple parts. I'm going to leave this as my base part, and I am going to right click on that and say ground. I get a little pin in here that tells me it's a grounded part, and I can't move it anymore. So here's my other part. I am going to add a couple constraints. All right, I can come up here to my assembly tab and say I want to add a joint. And this is just capture position. This just keeps things in the position they are. If I say continue, it's going to snap it back the way it was. I'll just say capture position. So it's asking me my first component. You're going to see that this little, uh, people call it a coin, um, a joint origin. You're going to see this attached to my cursor. If I hold the control, I, I know it's on this surface. I'm going to hold the control key, which freezes it to that surface. I'm going to bring it down to the origin point, the center point of that circle. All right, that's my first one. Now it's asking for component two. I'm going to bring it over here, and same thing. I want it to go to that center point, and I don't want a rigid. I want a revolve, a revolute joint, and it gives you a little bit of a preview, and that's exactly, I can animate it. That's exactly uh, the way I want it to look. I'm going to say okay. All right, so I'm going to do uh, another uh, joint, and I am going to choose uh, the bolt, and I am going to select this center. Now be sure you are zoomed in so you're not getting the center of the radius. All right, you make sure you're on that flat face, and you see my coin down in the center. I'm going to click there. I'm going to come over, and I'm going to select that center. And you'll see in this one, I don't want it to spin. I want this to be a rigid constraint. That's it. And it shakes a little bit. It just tells you now it's rigid. It's not going to move anywhere. And I'm going to say OK. Now the last one I want to do, I know that this bolt sticks out 3 quarters of an inch. I don't want to constrain it to this because when this turns, I don't want my nut to turn. So I'm going to constrain it to the end of this face. So I'm going to add a joint, and I'm going to place... Now here's another one. You can see there's a whole bunch of things in there I can grab onto, but I want to make sure it's on this face. I'm going to hold the control key down, and I'm going to make sure that it's on the center. And then I'm going to make sure that it's on the center of the bolt. All right, now I need to do something with this. Uh, I need to get it moved in a little bit. So I'm going to say negative 0.75. Oops wrong one. Let me get off of that. I was on. <laughs> You're going to see that I was on the X offset, and that's not what I wanted, so um, let me get this back to zero. And to avoid that, I should have chosen that arrow, because that's the way I want the offset. And I can either enter the offset here, negative 0.75, and that's the way I want it. I want it three quarters of an inch in it is now on that face of the bracket. It's a rigid I'm going to say OK, and it applies it. All right, so now everything's set. I'm ready to go. My nut's not turning. Um, there's only one thing I want to do left, and I'm kind of getting close to the very end. Um, what I want to do is I want to use a limit. I only want this to go from horizontal up 90 degrees to vertical. I want to put a limit so it won't swing all the way around. So what I need to do is I need to add a limit on that revolute joint. So if I come up here in my browser and I look, I see a joints folder, and you'll see that here's that revolute joint. And I got this little down arrow, I'm going to say edit the joint limits. And it tells me it's a rotate, yes, I need to put these two in there. I need the minimum and the maximum. Now this is where you may have to play a little bit. Um, so the minimum zero, I'm going to say the maximum is going to be 90 degrees. And that happens to be perfect. 
all right? Uh, sometimes you may have to put a negative 90 in there. Sometimes uh, the negative 90 has to go up to the minimum if the other dimension is zero degrees, because negative 90 is less than zero, so the negative 90 has to go in minimum. It's kind of like a, you, you have to play with this a little bit. So, and sometimes you have to actually flip the constraint, but let me animate it, and this is the way I want it to go. So I'm going to say OK, and that's it. That's what I was looking for. All right. So this is pretty much the end of uh, the demo. I mean, a simple thing is I can certainly, uh, the only other thing is I can add an appearance. I can hit the A button on my keyboard. And let's just say I want to add a paint. And I'll say, yeah, I like glossy paints. And I can just click a color and drop it on. And I'll put dark gray for my bolt and nut. So adding uh, colors is, is pretty easy too. Uh, just uh, add an appearance. So uh, that's all I had to show today. As I mentioned, I will continue this <coughs> excuse me, with another video that will go through the drawing process and, um, and the animation. Uh, a lot of people want to know about the animation exploded parts. So, all right, well, I hope this was a value. As I mentioned before, I'll add these two videos, this one and um, the animation and the drawing. I'm sorry that I, I selected a little bit too much content. Uh, but what we did today lent a lot to building simple all the way up through some semi-complex parts. So we touched on a lot of the commands necessary to do almost anything 